Hello everyone. Welcome to today's session. So today we are going to cover <clears throat> the rest of the chapter two and rest of the essays which are you know part of chapter two. Okay. So in last lecture, what we did, we summarized, uh, we discussed about uh, essay two forty auditor's responsibility with respect to okay, and wherein we what we did is. We understood what is the auditor's responsibility when it comes to the fraud and when it comes to the sorry, when it comes to the uh, you know uh, identification of fraud and when we are doing audit, what is the responsibility of, of the auditor in that case? So that was the first thing that we understood uh, with respect to SA two forty. Then we understood some of the key risk areas and then you know we discussed further what is required to. <clears throat> okay, so we discuss about SA 240 in detail. Now we will continue with the session. Okay, and if you guys have any doubt at any point in time, then please ask uh, the doubts immediately. Either I will take up immediately if it is related to the same topic, or you know, if it is possible. Otherwise, I will definitely take the doubts at the end of the session. Okay. So let's continue the topic. Now, when uh, we were discussing SA 240, we discussed about you know uh, auditor's responsibility, and before that, we discussed in detail the you know whole audit process as such, where you know and what will be the uh, auditor's responsibility, how we will plan the audit, and how we will you know uh, perform the audit. In line to that. In, in in that line itself, there is another essay that I want to cover and that's very important. That is essay 250. Okay. Now, essay 250 something, you know, is with respect to auditor's responsibility in case of laws and regulations. Auditor's responsibility with respect to laws and regulations. Now, when I talk about auditor's responsibility, what first thing comes in your mind when you talk when you think of a auditor's responsibility with respect to laws and regulations? So, what is the first thing that comes in your mind? 
when you hear this particular term anyone what is that first thing that comes in your mind like when i say auditor's responsibility with respect to laws and regulations and the audit of a financial statement what it comes in your mind first thing comes in your mind like okay what is the responsibility of auditor with respect to laws and regulations we have discussed that in previous lecture in detail uh, in summary at least anyone consideration of laws and regulations in a audit of financial statements okay consideration of laws and regulations in an audit of financial statement so what do you understand by this compliance with the relevant laws good tanisha okay checking the what laws applicable to the entity based on the nature of entity good regards uh, viraj uh, what what to do uh, with respect to laws when starting an audit very good charu complying with ca act guidelines company act chartered accountants regulations yes that is that is one also kachar uh, sorry puja uh, okay compliance with other laws and regulations okay mancha good okay compliance again with laws and regulations same geeta compliance with laws and regulations okay now <clears throat> shruti update yourself with laws and uh, laws and new regulations okay so very good guys yes so when i talk about considerations of laws and regulations in the audit of financial statement what i need to do is i need to consider what laws and regulations are applicable to an entity okay means when i talk about i am talking about consideration of laws and regulations with respect to audit or in an audit while doing the audit so it's auditor's responsibility to consider law and regulation when i say consider means to understand what are the laws and regulations applicable to an entity now for example hypothetical example today you have been appointed statutory auditor of xyz limited bracket nbfc okay it's a nbfc xyz limited nbfc for fy 22 23 simple you have been appointed statutory auditor of xyz and uh, limited nbfc for fy 22 23 xyz limited is also listed entity so that's also a listed entity now these are the two simple lines what do you understand like which laws and regulations will be applicable to this particular xyz limited now you tell me which laws and regulations will be applicable to this xyz limited which laws and regulations do you think will be applicable to now xyz limited
Tamam guys. Which law and regulations will be applicable to XYZ Limited? Pretty simple. XYZ Limited, RBA regulations. Good morning, RBI regulations regarding NBFC. I don't need specific name. You can just you know say a summary that will be fine for me. Don't do not like I I don't need specific you know RBI regulations name. Yeah, RBI regulations sufficient. Company set rules good. Company law, Sebi law, Tarisha very good. Viraj company set good. So NBFC law good. So I can say uh, company set. Okay, SEBI, uh, SEBI laws and regulations, rules and regulations, same way RBI, rules and regulations, listing regulations, yeah, what else, these three are there, what additional is applicable to this particular entity? You are forgetting one law which is, you know, kind of the, so your subject. Oh, CA regulation, company said. Okay, fine. That is there. Company sector. I have so yeah, company sector already there. Company sector and regulations that is there. It's a NBSC, so banking law. So I have written NBSC rules and regulations, not the banking one. Correct. Salish, Shruti, Yukta, uh, uh, income tax act. Okay. Then GST laws and regulations, GST laws, various laws, regulations, and everything. Okay. What else will be applicable to this particular entity? Which laws and regulations will be applicable? Good Tanisha. Labor laws. Well, right. Labor laws here. Next. Anything? Anything else that would be applicable? Anything else do you think would be applicable here? Social responsibility is kind of not a law. CSR is already part of company cycle. Other than that, social responsibility as of now, I don't think so. It's a law. What else? Money laundering, IT laws. So, if the company is dealing into IT, NBSC, so kind of, you know, IT act, money laundering, if applicable, okay. Uh, then, you know, uh, on a similar line, if I say privacy laws, So these all will be applicable, okay. negotiable, so, and then a lot of things. Now, if I identify, if I distinguish between these two set, this one, and let's say for example,
this one. If I identify or distinguish these two sets, what is the scenario is? What is the difference between these two cases? What is the difference between these two type of laws? So what do you feel is the difference between these two type of law, these two categories, I would say, of laws and regulations? Do you think is there any difference kind of between these two both categories? Do you think is there any difference between these two both categories or there is no difference? Both are same. Are they like, is there any difference between both of the set of laws or they are same? Good, Tanisha, very good. The first set of law is specific and the second set of laws are very general. Okay. Good. Weightage of compliance, uh, portion of applicability, good selection. So, when I say the first set of laws, the first set of laws have a major impact on financial statement. Am I correct? The first set of law will be having major impact on the financial statement, kind of. And the second set of law could have major or minor impact on operational expects, correct or not. So the first set of law will be having major impact on the financial statement. Second set of laws will be having major or minor impact on the operational aspects. Am I correct? Like, do you agree with me on this? Now, if that is the scenario, so when I talk about laws and regulations in case of audit, the auditor has to bifurcate between these two categories. And the first category is generally known as the laws and regulations uh, tends to have direct effect on the determination of material amount. I do not write major impact on financial statement. Okay. I do not write this. Instead, what I write is key term here for this kind of law is laws and regulations. Laws and regulations recognized to have a direct effect on the determination of material amounts amounts and disclosures in the financial statement. I know you said it's a sentence instead of a term, but yes. So laws and regulations recognized to have a direct effect on the determination of material amount and disclosure in financial statement. Kind of similar major impact on financial statement. So that is known as a uh, T, direct laws and regulations having direct effect. The second category, instead of I can say, you know, major or minor impact on operational aspect, we write it as Other laws and regulations uh, 
okay other laws and regulations that do not have a direct effect on the determination of amounts and disclosures in the financial statement it doesn't end here it's not that much but now this is something very important to understand but but compliance with which may be fundamental to the operating expense may be fundamental to the operating expense of the business okay so kind of you know you can say this way so other laws and regulations that do not have a direct effect on the determination of the amounts and then disclosures in the financial statement but compliance with which may be fundamental okay may be fundamental to the operating expense of the business or to continue to entity or to an entity ability to continue its business or to avoid material penalties okay and non compliance with such laws and regulations may therefore have a material effect in financial statement so see that's the thing we wrote major or minor impact on the operational expense but we have to whenever we write we have to write in a way that you know it comes a clear picture it comes a you know clear term that is other laws and regulations that do not have a direct impact or effect on the determination of amounts and disclosure in financial statement but compliance with which may be fundamental to the operating ex expense of the business okay very important two terms that we understood first that there are two categories of laws one is a direct law second is indirect one okay so that was the bifurcation between laws and regulations now what auditor has to do with this so tell, tell me one thing if i have a two set of laws and regulations one say i have one one and uh, i say uh, the law and regulation that i have tends to have a direct effect on other end i'm saying i have a law and regulations tends to have indirect effect will i audit both laws and regulations in the same manner will i audit both laws and regulations in the same manner what do you say come on guys do you think i am going to audit both laws and regulations in same manner yes no do you think i'm going to audit both laws and regulations in same manner or i should do that no no not in same manner correct good tanisha puja sravanan salesh geeta devote more time to first good shruti good mancha puja yeah so i will not audit both in the same manner that is for sure 
Okay. Because one has a direct effect, another doesn't have a direct effect. So I have to, you know, adopt a different strategy to audit both of them. I cannot audit in them both the same way. That is for sure. So how I need to audit, that is something I need to understand. And what is a requirement? See, what I told you in the first step, uh, first uh, session itself is standards is kind of a guiding path for you. So whenever you see a standard, it also sets an objective and the scope. So objective is something what is expected from you. What is the objective that it is required to be achieved? Objective is that what is your objective as an auditor? Okay, how many of you have seen the uh, bear standard documentation of the standard? How many of you read from that? Do you try, like, any one of you has, you know, went through and went to the portal or, you know, or try to read the standard? Good, Tanisha, very good. I'll show you something today. With respect to a standard only, the bare documentation that I am talking about. Because this is something, is a base. This is the thing that from where we are studying, this is something, you know, uh, the main, where we say a bare provision or bare act, the standards, is, this one is the basically bare standard. Okay. So, this is something that we need to, you know, always uh, should know that how to read it, where they are and from where we should, you know, uh, uh, like, you know, find what things are there. Generally, a standard basically is divided into certain portion. Like there are certain categories in the standard or you know sections kind of. The first section we have is is the scope of a standard. What things are basically covered in this? Okay, scope of the essay. Then the second important part of a standard is the objectives. Now, when I talk about objectives, it these objectives are something that auditor is expected to do or achieve. Okay. Auditor is expected to do or achieve these objectives by performing the audit. That is the objective of this particular standard. And then you have a th definitions, key definitions, key terms, kind of. And then you have a requirement. Now, when I say requirements, requirements is kind of what you have to do to achieve the objective. So, what is required to be done to achieve the objective? Then you have all the requirements, everything which is there and then uh, documentation part, very important part which people do not read is the application and other explanatory material. So this is kind of explanations and you know uh, other explanatory material given in the standard itself that explain why this para is there, why this requirement is there, what is the requirement. It will give you a lot of insight. Okay, so that is very uh, useful by understanding these standards. Okay. So when I talk about objective, so objective means what auditor is expected to do or achieve. How that is there in the requirement. But what when I say what is what is the uh, auditor is required to do or achieve is the objective. Okay. And this standard specify, as I said, standards are kind of you know guiding path for you. They set the expectations correct, like what is expected from you. So when the expectation comes, in case of these two type of laws and regulations, expectations are different by the standard itself. So expectation in case of uh, the first scenario, when I say, uh, when we have a direct laws and regulations, 
the expectation here is to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence sufficient and appropriate audit evidence regarding compliance with the provision okay of those laws and regulations so i need to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence regarding compliance with the provision so i need to make sure that i have the evidence available to demonstrate that there is a compliance with these laws and regulations i need to have audit evidence available in my hand to demonstrate that there has been compliance with this laws and regulations because they are having direct impact but when i'm saying other laws and regulations i need to perform so my objective here is to perform specified audit procedures to help just give me just give me sorry fucking okay let me write in some other way make it more clear okay yeah rather than to perform specified on here i say to respond appropriately uh to non compliances that is we have seen when we were dealing with you know uh what do you say uh, no clap okay but when i was saying to perform specified audit procedures to help identify i'll explain in a minute identify instance of non compliance instance of non compliance with other laws and regulations so whenever i will refer this category i will say these are the other laws and regulations okay so this particular category is for me other laws and regulations this category is other laws and regulations okay so laws and regulations means they have a direct effect other laws and regulations means they don't have a direct effect but understand the difference between both what is the objective at the one end is i need to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence in order to have a compliance in order to show compliance okay on one end i need to have i am required to have sufficient an appropriate audit evidence okay to demonstrate the compliance with the provisions of that laws and regulations on other hand i am only required to perform specified audit procedures to help identify instances of non compliance 
It means here, just understand the thing. I am here not required to obtain evidence with respect to the compliance. I will only check if there is any non-compliance or not in general by performing specified audit procedures. Okay. Understand the difference between both. On one hand, I am saying I need to have evidence that is more kind of, you know, near to, uh, uh, what do you say, higher category of evidence or more per pervasive evidence I need. Okay. On the other hand, I am saying, okay, I will perform all specified audit procedures. I will check if there are any non-compliance or not, and that is sufficient for me. So I will perform the procedures. If I identify any non-compliance, then good. If I don't identify, I will leave it. But in other cases, I will obtain evidence to ensure that the compliance is there. In secondary, uh, in second case, it's kind of a negative assurance. Okay. Wherein I say, okay, if I have not identified anything, means everything is compliant. In the first case, no. I have to take evidence to demonstrate the compliance. Understand the difference between both. So, that's the difference between, uh, you know, the requirement or objective of the auditor. When it comes to the two categories of laws and regulations. Okay. Now, that was laws and regulations and the objective. The third part is very important that we need to understand is, which is applicable in both of the cases. To respond appropriately, to non-compliance okay, or suspected non-compliance with laws and regulations Identified during audit. So I am saying that respond appropriately to non compliance or suspected non compliance identified during audit. That is applicable for both laws and regulations. It's not only one but both. Okay. I have to respond and that is something similar to the NOCLA that we have already seen. Okay. Clear till now? Any doubt? Any doubt? No? No doubts? Okay. If no doubts, then uh, my next question to you guys is, let's, uh, you know, you tell me that how Will you try to obtain, okay, how will you try to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence with respect to the compliance? Now coming to the first part, compliance or this one, obtaining sufficient and appropriate audit evidence regarding the compliance with the provision. How, what you will do to, uh, you know, ensure that there is a compliance. Now, how will you obtain, you know, sufficient and appropriate audit evidence? Okay, I'll tell you now obtain the compliance, uh, you know, obtain the sufficient and appropriate audit evidence. How will you obtain? What will you do? That is important that then we need to understand. 
what you will do with respect to this come on guys what you will do to understand uh, or to identify or to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence now let's say for example you need to obtain the sufficient and appropriate audit evidence what you will do to obtain that that is the main part that we need to understand okay standard guide guided us i need to understand the compliance i need to see with you know what are the compliance with the uh, uh, kind of you know uh, tds income tax but what i will do to take you know uh, to ensure that i have a sufficient audit evidence with respect to the compliance checking for proper legal documents good kanisha memorandum or articles of association moa or aoa is kind of one of the area but not the only like it, it will not provide me that much sufficient and appropriate audit evidence about first of all we should have knowledge of relevant laws and regulations applicable then we we'll compare those laws with the normal practice and sop good charu very good so first of all you should have the knowledge that is very good starting point that is there what else come on guys what else do you think you know uh, could be done to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence Come on, come on, Peter. anyone any idea no okay so the audit procedures but which audit procedures puja legal documents good ask for confirmation about compliance process procedures okay good salish refer the rules of specific laws and check whether they have been followed absolutely correct mohammad very good yukta any forms that is to be filed in applicable laws has been filed very good yukta charu Uh, we can check their compliance with the id and password of relevant portals like income tax gst checking filing return using work of an expert good charu good shruti uh, geeta internal controls very good absolutely correct on on a particular thing yeah so when i talk about i need to check the compliance okay so there are few things that first i need to understand with respect to that
So when I was talking about that, I need to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence. I need to understand few things first. I cannot directly obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence without understanding the laws and regulations which are applicable. So there will be two parts. One, I have to take the understanding first, and then I have to you know perform the audit procedures. Okay, and then there are other procedures that I need to perform along with the uh, you know audit procedures. If I have identified non-compliance, how to report the non-compliance and everything. First of all, I need to understand what is the thing I need to do at the planning stage. So whenever you are, you know, going to see, like, okay, this is I need to perform. So break down that particular activity in three stages: planning, performance, and the reporting. So what you will do in the planning, what you will do in the performance stage, and what you will do in the reporting stage. And then, if you think on the of the three aspects, then you will be able to answer okay i will do this on planning then this uh, based on this planning i will do this on performance okay then i will do this on reporting if you can you know answer this uh, on these three you know stages what you will do you will definitely get sufficient and appropriate audit evidence for sure okay same way in order to obtain the evidence okay to obtain sufficient and appropriate or audit evidence what i need to do is first of all i need to obtain understanding so at the time of planning you can say obtain understanding of both laws and regulations both categories okay with respect to uh, like what is the legal and regulatory framework applicable to the, the uh, entity industry sector in which entity operates so kind of obtain understanding of laws and regulations industry in which the entity is operating Sector in which the entity is operating. When I say laws and regulations, you know when well. Why industry? Because industry also plays an important role. Industry sometimes you know help you to identify additional laws and regulations. For example, if it is a manufacturing industry, you may you know come to know okay, it may it it may be you know having environmental laws into place. If let's say for example it is an you know uh, industry kind of you know which is operating or you know. Uh, kind of a critical chemical, okay, pharma. They might be having additional laws and regulations. For example, now coming to the sector. Let's say this is a particular sector FDI uh, regulations, so FDI norms. So uh, if there is you know a sector real estate kind of, and you say okay now in real estate sector, if I can see you know there are FDI norms, there are rules and regulations, a lot of things. Rara is there. So industry sector helps you to identify. What is the framework or additional laws that might be applicable to you? Okay, you need to obtain that understanding. Number two. Now this will give you first answer. Uh, first answer to this particular, you know, second uh, thing that you need to do. Whose responsibility it is to comply with the law? So my question is. Whose responsibility in the entity to comply with all laws and regulations? Whose responsibility in the entity to comply with all laws and regulations? Simple question. So, what do you think? Whose responsibility is it? Management, good mancha, 
common very good it's a management responsibility okay the answer comes is management slash those charged with governance we will not write only management we'll read those charged with governance now the question comes is how they are doing that i need to understand if it is a responsibility of the management i need to understand how entity is complying with the framework how management is ensuring that they are complying with the framework leave my audit evidence aside i want to understand how management is ensuring that they are complying with the framework or laws and regulations so on to this i will ask the question to management that how entity or management is complying with laws and regulation so i understand that is my role to identify all the applicable laws and regulations but at the same time it is also management's responsibility to identify and to comply with it then how the management is identified has management prepared a combined list whether they have you know marked all the laws and regulations at one place okay these are the laws and regulations that will be applicable okay so based on that you know in that case if management has identified then and then only okay uh management can you know perform procedures management can do anything uh with respect to compliance like for example if i don't know which laws and regulations are applicable then what i can do how can i you know ensure that i have complying with that so whatever it is expected from us the same way will be expected from management also and it's in the same line if it is expected from management then yes uh i will understand how management is doing that how many of you have actually you know went and uh, read the annual reports of the company how many of you read the annual report of company how many of you read the annual report of company like anyone like you have read the annual report let me show you something in the annual report okay first of all i am not promoting any company disclaimer okay i am not promoting any company i am not you know in favor of you know this uh, like uh, kind of you know promoting a company or i have open this purpose fully this is an example public document available to the public on the online i have taken document from there okay do not focus on the company name so coming to this particular portion where i was referring to directors responsibility statement that you have read under section 1345 of company act okay now if you see directors responsibility statement under section 1345 of the act there is one such uh point in the director responsibility statement that this they have devised proper system to ensure compliance with provisions of applicable laws and such uh, and that such system are educated and operating effective this point this particular point i need to understand what system you have devised okay so my question will go to the to the management okay management tell me you are saying that you have devised proper systems okay 
you are saying that you have devised proper systems to ensure compliance with the provisions of laws and regulations and you are also saying that such systems are adequate and operating effectively in that case they gave me the details of that give me the details of such systems such uh, you know uh, whatever you are saying you have proper systems and how you can say that these are operating effectively what you have done to ensure that these are operating effectively okay plus over and above that over and above that i will show you one more thing which is there in the audit report i will give it here just below of this this is kind of you know secretary uh, secretarial audit report in the secretarial audit report you will find what are the laws and regulations that will be available applicable to the company for example foreign election management act okay to the extent uh, fdi o odi and external commercial borrowing regulations then you have a sebi act applicable to them in that you have these regulations kind of you know uh, which are applicable these many regulations are applicable so from last year's annual report also uh, you can identify what regulations are applicable kind of not all but yeah it will help you to identify that for example companies act i have okay securities contract regulation act depositories act and its regulations that we saw then these are again some sebi regulations then we have a this is very important laws specifically applicable to the industry to which the company belongs as identified by the management that is to say electricity act and explosives act again kind of sector specific laws that i was talking about okay kind of sector specific laws that are applicable to the company that management has identified that's very good so electricity act and explosive act what else we have they have a secretarial standard issued they have a listing agreements of the stock exchange okay so some of the you know laws and regulations that are applicable to the company are listed over here some of not all but some of major are when are listed over here there will be other laws and regulations also that will be applicable okay and uh, on the basis of that you can say okay uh, you know like these are the laws and regulations that are applicable but this will help you to identify plus i'm not sure how many of you have seen you know in detail the audit report or sorry annual report but if i have if i bring your attention to one particular page so these are various committees that are mentioned and you will be seeing in you know somewhere down the line uh, what are these committees risk management committee and uh, you know all these information technology data security committee all these committees are there and one of such committee when i talk about one of such committee is basically your uh, regulation risk committee or uh, sorry no regulation Uh, there is one legal committee corporate yeah legal regulatory and tax uh, tax compliance committee in the entity itself so they have a committee which is known as a lrt committee now the role of nrt committee in terms of reference and the role of nrt committee is to exercise oversight in with respect to the structure operating ethic operation and efficiency of the company's compliance program to review legal tax and regulatory matters that may have a material impact on the company's financial statement disclosure reputation risk and business continuity risk to review compliance with the applicable applicable laws and regulations to approve compliance audit plan for the year and review such audits to be performed by internal audit department 
to review significant inquiries received from and reviews by regulator government agencies including without limitation and all those things okay to review overseas and approve tax strategy tax governance framework and consider tax uh, action tax risk management and they have a frequency of that and who are the members of committee and when they met so if you have this detail what i can do is i can pull out the minutes of meeting i can see what was discussed how it was discussed how these objectives are achieved and then i can take an understanding of okay how the committee is basically you know functioning what the what things they are looking into and what are the areas they are looking into i will have a good understanding in the real sense of the laws and regulations and how the company is ensuring so when i say how the entity or management is complying with laws and regulations i will be having a lot of open options with me i will be having a lot of things with me to understand this particular area okay so how the management is doing i will perform the inquiry with the management sorry inquiry with management then uh including those charge with governance with respect to how they are making such compliances i will inspect uh correspondence uh correspondence from various regulatory authorities and how i will identify these correspondence that they have okay how how will i identify number one i can go and check mom that is there number two the management is already saying in the director responsibility statement that they have system i will understand that system i will understand what management is doing to comply with them or they are just writing in you know a sentence in the director responsibility statement no i will in real understand we go and understand these things okay then i will remain alert like kind of professional skepticism okay if i identify or suspect in non compliance last i will take written representations with respect to you know uh, compliance and systems and procedures okay so i will do that and if i do not identify any uh, non compliance or suspected non compliance then i am not required to perform further audit procedures with respect to entities compliance with laws and regulations other than you know the these uh, the ones i have discussed just now so this is a thing that i need to obtain uh, you know with respect to the plan so other than this if no non compliance is identified if no non compliance has been identified okay then no requirement to perform any additional procedures okay so if i have a sufficient and appropriate audit evidence and if i have not identified any non compliance then fine i'll not to, uh, perform further audit procedures to make sure that okay there is no suspected non compliance so if till the point i'm sure that i have sufficient and appropriate audit evidence either with respect to the compliance with the direct laws or in case of other laws i am sure that okay whatever testing i have done i will not identify any non compliance in that case no need to perform further audit procedures 
that is something you know at the planning stage we will say performance okay performance stage now <clears throat> performance stage again you know there are two things in the performance stage when i say number one i will do the testing that is there whatever testing i am you know uh, i am required to do perform testing okay uh, as per other essay and we will see litigations and everything you know essay 501 we will see other areas with respect to estimation and everything so as of now performance i will restrict here because in other essays i also bring this example again that when it comes to the you know laws and regulations how we test but the second part which is very important is with respect to the performance is what to do when you identify non compliance okay audit procedures when non compliance is identified or suspected if you are identified or suspected any non compliance what you will do now you tell me what you will do when you identify a non compliance or you suspect there is a non compliance come on guys what you will do when you will identify a non compliance or you will suspect there is a non compliance discuss with management good discuss with those charged with governance correct what else good bunch up will report the same salary squad okay but i'll say do not hurry to report like okay uh, it will be like you know the scenario like okay i have identified the uh, the company has not filed its tds return on time and i go to income tax directly okay the company has not filed tds return so i'll say not directly go to the reporting portion what we will do when we identify the non compliance before going to the reporting yeah reporting is there but what you will do so there is a you know kind of a story i'll tell you uh, so one of the person you know uh, got a call okay uh, he was working somewhere he got a call from the security team uh, there is a fire in the building okay the person rushed out of the building went directly to the fire station and he uh, you know asked everyone over there there is a fire in the building now everyone asked him few questions where is the fire how on which floor how much the fire in a lot of questions with respect to the fire and the person was not having any answer and why because in hurry he just went for the reporting without collecting all the necessary details okay so don't do you know i i suggest not to do such things because what will happen is in, even in, in the real life when you will do the real audit reporting is the last stage keep it for the last till the time we don't reach to the reporting try to connect like okay if we have to report okay we have to report that is for sure let's say for example you identify fraud you have to report you have to report but before reporting collect the necessary information collect whatever data you can collect the understanding obtain the understanding of the matter same is applicable over here also i will go to reporting that is for sure if required i'll go to reporting but what if you know kind of a fire when the person said there is a fire the fire was kind of you know uh, 
will just a lighter or some small bin that's it which could be mitigated within the company itself by you know just a fire extinguisher we don't need the whole fire truck so whenever you see a non compliance or suspected non compliance understand how much big the non compliance is how much big the fire is what things will be required to mitigate the fire you will require fire extinguisher or you will require a fire you know fire fighting truck or with fire fire fighting people and then we need to decide our next steps on the similar line here also and obtain an understanding first of all of the matter what is the matter like what is the non compliance here or the circumstances in which it is has occurred for example there was a lot of delays in filing you know uh, statutory returns compliances during covid period yes there is a non compliance i know there is a non compliance but what is the circumstances under which there is a non compliance it's a covid period people are not able to comply with the due dates they are not able to comply with the requirements i can understand i will not go to the authority okay company is not filing the return please do something no understand the circumstance understand uh, what are the scenarios what is the non compliance here and why the non compliance is here okay so you need to understand from that point of view kind of you know uh, what is the non compliance why is the non compliance there since when the non compliance is happening who are responsible person when you will ask these questions now you will get the information So kind of since when the non-compliance opinion who is responsible? Okay, so when you will ask these questions, you will get information, understanding what, why, when, who. Okay, and the last part is how to comply back or mitigate kind of. So these questions will definitely give you a good understanding. then once you obtain the understanding okay based on this understanding you need to assess the impact kind of you know fire let's say for example in case of a fire the fire was in the dustbin if i say the fire is in the dustbin the impact could be the dustbin that is fine if the fire is in building on a floor on on you know normal area where the people work there could be a very big impact loss of furniture a lot of you know even loss of human life could be there if not evacuated within the time so assess the impact or possible effect now i'll give you two scenarios i said there was a dustbin in the normal area of the office where there are lot many papers or you know the dustbin is surrounded by lot many papers furniture wood which can catch fire quickly so fire in the dustbin even though in the dustbin is very harmful uh, is very concerning or you can say uh, they, it possesses a serious risk that the fire might spread to other areas but on the other end i say there is a dustbin outside office somewhere in the stairs where there is brick and everything the fire cannot spread further it will only burn whatever there is in the dustbin in that case the same dustbin the same fire has lesser risk lesser possible effect possible impact so it may be a same amount of fire but again i need to understand where the fire is which area 
which line item which process of the uh, uh, there fire is kind of a non compliant okay let's say for example i give you a hypothetical example you tell me uh penalty for non filing of tds return and penalty for non filing of audit report are the same or different penalty for non filing of tds return and penalty for non filing of audit report tax audit report are the same or different good mancha very good good mohammed good good salish so both are based on income tax and both are compliances where i need to file certain documents but if i have missed one tds return i could be having a lesser penalty that is on the basis of a day number of days calculation okay but if i miss my tax audit report to be filed then the company could have a penalty up to i think 100% of the tax amount or 300% of the tax amount i'm not sure but yeah uh, that could be the range of the penalty see the range of the penalty in both of the cases both are non compliance both are non compliance under the income tax act but the range of the penalty is vast one somewhere below one somewhere high so you need to assess what is the possible impact of this and at times non compliances are not that much straight forward trust me you will not able to you know assess the impact there are certain kind of non compliances that you will you know you will get your head like okay what could be the possible impact in this non compliance because let's say for example i give you a hypothetical example the company you know uh, is manufacturing company or kind of a mining company now they are doing what they are doing is they are mining onto a area which is technically not allowed you they are mining they started mining from somewhere but they somehow reached to a area on where the mining is not allowed what you will do how will you identify the non top plants the impact of the non top plants or for example i would take an example let's say uh it's a you know uh any other company take any other example for example i'll take uh bank okay banks so banking regulation there are lot many banking regulations now in a bank the regulations when a person comes for the account or for any of the product of the bank they have to you know take certain documents now there are is a there is a deficiency in the documents so some uh, bank branch forgot to take some documents from all the people they press understood the circular that was issued by rbi how will you uh, understand the impact of that in that case now recently i'm not sure how many of you heard there was a digital personal data protection act okay Digital Personal Data Protection Act (DPDP Act 2023), which just recently passed in August 2023, it has a huge penalties, huge penalty. But on the same side, there are non-compliances which are not easy to identify. Okay, non-compliance with respect to consent, non-compliance with respect to you know uh, unauthorized processing, something like that. In that case, it becomes very difficult to identify what was the non-compliance till what period. whether there is a actual non compliance or there is a you know just uh, kind of you know area basic which is which is coming into the uh, purview of non compliance because different under uh, interpretation of the law or regulation or a provision for example mfn clause the recent supreme court judgment now i am not a tax expert but again if someone was taking benefit of mfn clause okay earlier now because of the supreme court judgment the scenario is different now they are suddenly coming into the purview of non compliance earlier they were complying with the provision as per whatever steps they have taken now suddenly there is a shift and they become non compliant so 
whether this will be counted as a non compliance or not whether what will be the impact of the non compliance that is required to be understood clear any doubt till now any doubt now from here what i can say is that assess the possible impact now i can say from these from there there will be three types three scenarios that could arise one possible impact possible effect is material or kind of say uh, is is not material and the third one i can say i don't know i will not say in the means i will not document i don't know but when i say i don't know or, or I, i can't understand or i i am not able to figure it out that means you are not able to assess the possible impact okay unable to assess the impact so either i can say it's a you know has material impact either i can say uh it has it, the impact is not material and i in the last case i can say unable to assess them okay if i say the impact is material with respect to the non compliance okay or suspected non compliance then i need to seek legal advice okay what should be done in this scenario i may you know also think to uh, withdraw from the engagement because i have just started the engagement or i am doing the engagement i like it my i i might also you know consider the impact on my audit opinion when it is non material fine it's not material leave it you won't do anything further okay so uh, no further actions required now again if i say i am not able to assess the impact then what i need to do is seek legal advice or consider the impact on the audit opinion because i am not able to you know assess the impact i need to go to someone else to seek the advice and then i will consider the impact on my audit opinion in all the three scenarios uh, after you know having understanding whether it is material non material whether i am able to assess the impact or not in all the three scenarios i will go and then communicate to those are with governments i'll communicate to those are with governments okay boss this is the non compliance now you have to look at to this non compliance i have identified the non compliance okay please look into this so unless and that to uh, there is a exception to that exception is unless those charged with governance are involved in non compliance if there is a purposeful non compliance by the those charged with governance i will not go and communicate to them that may alert them but where they are not involved i will go to the those charged with governance and i will say okay this is a matter of non compliance i am aware of i have identified or i suspect okay and uh, this has come to my attention and please look into this
okay if what if if the those chat with governments are involved then i need to report to some higher authority in that case report to higher authority next level higher authority if there is no next level then again you need to seek legal advice and who to report and when i say impact on the audit opinion i need to consider the impact on audit opinion i need to see whether i it's a requirement of a uh, modified opinion or not okay then along with this along with this i need to also assess uh, one more thing one side i had i had to communicate to those charge with governance second side i need to understand the requirement to report to legal authorities means i need to understand okay is there any requirement to report to the legal authorities if yes then i have to report okay i will consider the impact on audit report or audit opinion as per sa 705 so that is the thing with respect to laws and regulations any doubt guys any doubt with respect to the whole essay that we just understood any doubt so we started understanding the two categories what is required to be done for those these two categories and how i need to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence with respect to these two categories so when i was explaining performance at the end of performance we directly jump to the reporting part okay this is the reporting part over here so instead of rep having reporting after here like i just brought it below so that you know in chain we can see what is performance and what after performance happens any doubt guys any doubt okay puja if no doubts then let's take a quick 10 minute break after the break we will go to the questions of this these essays so that now whatever we have understood are we able to answer the questions that will come into the exam that's a very important part understanding is there but you should be able to answer the question also based on what you have understood so we will see in the next uh, after the break okay okay
Hello everyone, welcome back. So let's continue with the session quickly. Okay. So till now we have discussed SA 240, 250 both. Okay. And SA 220 also. Let's see some of the questions on this particular topic, these particular topics, and then we can, you know, understand how to answer the question. But that is also very much important. Just let me open it. So we'll take questions from all the topics, not only one topic. Let us see. During uh, let's uh, let's see this question. During the audit, okay, of Mahavir Limited, a listed company, engagement partner completed his review and also ensured compliance with the independence requirement that applied to the audit engagement. The engagement files were also reviewed by engagement quality control reviewer, except the independent assessment documentation. Engagement partner was of the view that the matters related to independence assessment are the responsibility of engagement partner, not of engagement quality control reviewer. Engagement quality control reviewer objected to this and refused to sign off the documentation. Please advise as per SA 220. So guys, please advise as per SA 220 whether engagement quality control reviewer is correct or engagement partner is. Who is correct in this current scenario? Come on, guys. So, who is correct in the current scenario? Engagement quality control reviewer or engagement partner? And you need to support your answer with the reason. Come on guys quickly. So during the audit of Mahavir Limited, a listed company, engagement partner completed its reviews and also ensured compliance with the independence requirement that apply to audit engagement. Now the engagement for files were reviewed by the EQCR except for the independence assessment. Engagement partner was of the view that the factors related to the independence are not responsibility of the uh, EQCR, but they are the responsibility of the engagement partner and EQCR is not required to review the same. And there was a dispute between EQCR and engagement partner on that matter. So you tell me who is correct and who is not. Consider this as a four marks question in your exam. Consider this as a four marks question in your exam. Come on, guys. Come on, come on quickly. Pretty easy. There is no difficulty in this. Nothing difficult in this.
view of the engagement partner is not tenable good salish but why why answer is there but i want with reason should i show you the answer should i show you the answer guys what do you say or would you still like to try okay let me discuss the answer here see when we discussed about quality control at that particular point in time we understood what is responsibility of the engagement quality control reviewer engagement quality control reviewer is required to okay review the uh, you know engagement teams evaluation of firm's independence engagement quality control reviewer is required to review i'm not sure manan from like surfishi at 20 2002 if i'm not sure that is the correct answer over here but okay. this is as per sa 220 okay sa 220 What SA two twenty says is SA two twenty talks about two responsibilities. One is a responsibility of engagement partner. Second is the responsibility of engagement quality control reviewer. Where there is the engagement quality control reviewer, now for a listed company, engagement quality control reviewer is mandatory. We saw that. Now where there is the engagement quality control reviewer, he has to look into. majority of the critical areas including independence when i say majority of the critical areas he is, he is required to review critical estimates critical decisions professional judgments that has been made so eqcr has to review these working papers eqcr has to look into these working papers and then only once the eqcr reviews these working papers then only okay it is possible uh for eqcr to sign once eqcr signs at that particular point in time what will happen is uh the partner can you know issue the audit report okay so eqcr has to sign this uh, you know audit uh, uh, review all these requirements over here so that is mandatory so in the current case if i say eqcr is not grown he is required to see He is required to review all these things, and accordingly, he needs to, you know, give a sign off. Once he gives a sign off, then only the engagement partner can issue the audit report. Clear? So let us also see the answers. as per sa 220 engagement partner shall form a conclusion on compliance with the independence requirement that apply to the audit engagement in doing so the engagement partner shall obtain relevant information evaluate information or identify breaches take appropriate action to eliminate such threats or reduce them to an acceptable level by applying safeguards okay once he does that the engagement partner shall take a responsibility for reviews being performed in accordance with the firm's reviews policies and procedures as per sa 220 quality control for an audit for audit of financial statement of listed entity engagement quality control reviewer 
on performing an engagement quality control review shall also consider engagement teams evaluation of firm's independence in relation to the audit engagement in the case engagement partner is not right a assessment document should also be given to the engagement quality control reviewer for his now see how the answer has been written that is also important number 1 i am explaining here the requirements as per sa 220 but before that what i did is sa 220 also i specified i specified the number sa 220 in my answer so that the reader can have a clear understanding and then i started explaining about the responsibilities of engagement partner first okay engagement partner shall form a conclusion so that is the responsibility of engagement partner over here this is kind of you can say kind of a uh, you know responsibility of engagement partner i started writing about that however on the first i started about the essay where i you know i'm mentioning about the essay okay what is the essay what is the requirement of you know essay so i'm mentioning the details of essay also okay specify essay then i explain the provision whatever provision it is the whole provision that is there i am explaining the provision requirements of the provision from here till here okay this is explaining the provision or explaining the essay once i am explaining the essay then i am again coming to the requirement of uh, eqcr what is eqcr's roles and responsibility so that is uh, here responsibility of eqcr and before that if i before providing the responsibility of eqc i again i am referring to the essay so i am referring to the essay because in the same essay it is there is a responsibility of eqc so i need to specify again the essay okay as per this essay this is the responsibility of eqc and then in, in the last in the end what i am doing is i am concluding so this is kind of a conclusion that i am giving over here conclusion or final remarks kind of i am giving over here so this is how i am writing the answer okay i am specifying the essay i am specifying you know the provision whose responsibility it is and then i am going you know uh, on the conclusion provision explanation conclusion these will be the three steps provision explanation and then conclusion
Yeah. It's not only what the answer is, it is also how to write the answer. Let us see one more question then. I could say this is a very good question. DA Incorporation, a company based in USA, has a subsidiary in, uh, in India named AAPL. The company has been involved in manufacturing of auto spare parts for the last 10 years. Messrs. APN Company were appointed statutory auditor for financial year 21-22 of AAPL. Miss uh, P, the firm's partner, decided to form a uh, team of 10 employees, consisting of four articles, three executives, one manager, one partner, and one engagement quality control reviewer. After deciding all the terms of engagement, Ms. P started the audit. Ms. P appointed Mr. Z as an engagement quality control reviewer who was recently a qualified graduate from the prominent B school in India. During the financial year 21-22, the engagement partner assessed that there would be a need to appoint an expert for evaluation of the machinery and fixer set. The engagement partner informed the engagement manager to hire Mr. K as an expert. The engagement manager Manager decided not to consult with Mr. K and proceed with the ordinary audit post. At the time of finalization and signing of the audit report, engagement partner did not review the working paper regarding the consultation with Mr. K and trusted in the good faith upon the engagement manager that he must have consulted and incorporated the consultation in the audit. However, engagement manager forgot to inform engagement partner about not consulting with Mr. K. Also, Mr. Z, while performing his review, was not able to identify the issue. Kindly, you know, discuss in uh, in light of SA220, kindly, you know, provide your comments. Okay, discuss this particular scenario. So, what is not correct here? What is correct and what is not correct? What is the issue? What is the issue do you understand in this particular scenario? Come on guys, what is the uh, issue in this particular scenario? We have discussed particular this topic here. Trust me, in the last lecture or in the lecture of quality control, we discussed this one. Come on, come on, guys, quickly. What is the problem over here? I don't think so. This is pretty uh, that much difficult. Come on, guys, quickly. Good morning. Very good. Good Mohammed. Very good. Good. Absolutely good Mohammed. Manish. Wonderful.
Only two answers. Come on, guys. I have only received answer from Munish and Mohammed. That's it. Consider this as a question in your exam. It could come as an MCQ, as a you know four marks, five marks, whatever you can think. Like it can come in your exam. How will you answer at that particular point in time? No, that's it. Okay, let me show you something that we, you know, discussed in the previous lecture. Remember these notes that we discussed of SA220, quality control for an auditor financial statement. In there, we had some about leadership responsibilities. The engagement partners shall take leadership responsibility for overall quality of audit. Remember something we discussed? Then also we discussed that, you know, the engagement team taking appropriate consultation on the difficult and contentious matter. Now the engagement matter, uh, the engagement partner shall take the responsibility. Remember, engagement performance, we discussed this particular area. Consultation, engagement partners, responsibility. Are you getting? Remembering something from that particular lecture. Same lecture, we also discussed about the independence. In case of listed, the reviewer shall consider the evaluation of firm's independence as per SQC 1. In that lecture, we discussed uh, the answer to question before this. Remember? Now, if I say it's the responsibility of the engagement partner to look into the matters Engagement partners shall take responsibility for the consultation on difficult and contentious matter. And here in our question, engagement partner missed out. At the time of finalization in signing audit report, engagement partner did not review working paper. Plus, engagement manager forgot to inform an engagement partner. Even while performing, Mr. Z, while performing his review, was not able to identify the issue. So, there are two big problems. One, the first problem I could say is yeah, is that the engagement manager did not review uh, the work paper. So that is the first problem I can say. Engagement manager did not review the working paper regarding consultation and trusted in good faith upon the engagement manager. That is a problem that engagement partner did. Number two, engagement partner appointed Mr. Z as the quality control reviewer who was recently graduated from prominent B school. Where is the experience of engagement quality control reviewer on the audits? He should be an experienced person. So these are the two major issues that has been, you know, problems or uh, mistakes done by the engagement partner. Mistake one and mistake two. Based on all these two issues, I could say that yes, engagement partner is responsible for this, for this miss. And if I have to write the answer, I will. How will I write the answer? First, I will give the SA two twenty. Then explain the provision. When I explain the provision, I will explain the provision first from engagement partners' view. What is the responsibility of engagement partner? I'll explain the responsibility of EQCR responsibility. And then I will explain current scenario. And I will conclude. 
this is how we we'll explain the answer in the current case mr miss p the engagement partner because of these two observations or these two mistakes engagement partner is responsible for this miss or for this issue clear any doubt guys any doubt any doubt okay if no doubt let us see one question that was there in the exam okay mrs kumar and company charter accountants were appointed as a statutory auditor of pc limited for financial year 2021 during the course of audit one of the partners c a kumar observed that there is a misappropriation of assets in the form of theft of entities inventory and is perpetrated by employees in the relative small and near material amounts c a kumar is concerned with the existence of certain circumstances for increasing the susceptibility of the assets to misappropriation guide c a kumar with respect to the risk factors related to the misstatement arising from misappropriation of assets with reference to the relevant standards on auditing so first of all which is the relevant standards on auditing here which relevant standard on auditing we are referring over here and which are the risk factors can anyone tell me the risk factors in the current scenario and the standards on auditing that we are referring over here which are the risk factor come on guys okay let me help you with one of the scenario here when i say misappropriation of assets okay arising from uh sorry miss statement arising from misappropriation of assets when i say this particular term over here now uh can i write this particular term as can i write this particular term misappropriation of asset arising from as basically uh fraud so miss statement arising from misappropriation of asset means fraud okay can i write this as a fraud now we with respect to risk factor related to fraud now what are the risk factors related to fraud i just took one term and i replaced in a simpler version for you guys miss uh, miss statement arising from misappropriation of asset is equal to fraud now you tell me what are the risk factors that are there with related to the fraud Risk, risk factors related to fraud come on guys now this should be pretty easy
Trust me, they should be literally pretty easy. What are the risk factors related to fraud? So I'll take the term misstatement arising from misappropriation of asset. I will convert that statement equivalent to fraud because what is misstatement arising from misappropriation of asset? It's a fraud, kind of fraud. Okay. And what are the risk factors related to fraud? Muhammad, you answered only one factor. There are multiple. There are uh, you know some more factors. Which are those factors? Correct. Absolutely correct moment. So when I say risk factors related to fraud, I'm asking fraud risk factors. And you can, you know, answer basically gave us, which is the relevant standard on auditing is the SA 240. Auditor's responsibility relating to fraud in an audit of financial statement. And then you can provide, okay, what are the risk factors? Okay, incentive, opportunities, then rationalization. These are the, you know, fraud risk factors basically. So there's nothing but the, you know, fraud risk factors. Some of the examples of fraud risk factors, which is asked in, in this question. Clear? Any doubt? Any doubt, guys? No? Okay, if no doubts, then let us see one more question. Karanjay and Associates, a firm of chartered accountants, has been operating for last 20 years, having its office at multiple locations across India. The firm has a staff of around 100 persons with 12 partners. The firm has been offering assurance advisory service and tax advisory service to various clients. The primary work of the firm is a tax advisory. The audit partners within the firm discuss that the firm needs to work significantly to improve the quality of the service they offer, which would also help the firm grow its business. Considering this objective, the firm started mandatory training program for staff. During one such training program on quality control for audit, Mr. Meath, one of the audit manager, inquired regarding the information that the firm should obtain before accepting an engagement with a new client or when deciding whether to continue with an existing engagement or whether when considering acceptance of a new engagement with existing client. Okay, so what you need to do is kindly guide Mr. Meath with respect to the information that assists the engagement partner in determining whether the conclusion reached regarding the acceptance and continuance of the client relationship and the audit engagement are appropriate or not. So you need to guide Mr. B with respect to information that assists the engagement part. So what do you think is there are the information that are relevant? So my question here, the question is, which are the information that assists the engagement partner? You need to provide some information. Okay, these are the areas that the engagement partner should look into for acceptance and continuance of the client. Come on, guys. Now consider this as a five mark question in your exam. We have discussed this thing. What information can help engagement partner with respect to deciding the matters uh, related to the acceptance and continuance of clients? Come on, come on, quickly.
we have already discussed this in our SQC one. I am telling you SQC one. SA two twenty both. Because I have specifically said it's a quality control for an audit. You have a direct hint given in the question itself. You have a direct hint given in the question itself. Anyone? What are the informations that might help the engagement partner when the engagement partner is going to decide upon the acceptance and continuance of client relationship? What is that information that will help engagement partner? Come on, guys! Quickly, we have discussed this. Correct, Mancha. Very good. Very good. I have received one answer. That is correct. Good, Mancha. Okay, remember in our uh, lecture of the quality control, while taking the notes also, we discussed this point, like acceptance and continuous of client relationship and specific engagement. So we discuss what is the requirement that can we accept the client, that uh, how we can identify the firm has considered the integrity of the client, the firm is competent to perform the engagement and has. Capability, time, and resources can comply with the ethical requirements. Remember something we discussed on this line in the in that particular lecture. Remember, we also discussed this particular example of ABC managing partner, Mr. B or the audit partner, Mr. C taxation partner providing taxation advisory service. So they should have a combined list. Remember, we discussed in that particular lecture about this example, timely updation of the uh, you know com common list. Then who can who is providing the service to whom? What is the scenario? So you know, uh, we discuss about uh, various partners. If we provide service to same company, it could be familiarity thread. Uh, for longer time, if I provide the service, it could be familiarity thread. I need to check acceptance and continuance before providing the service. Remember something we discuss in that lecture. On the same line, it is. It is those four requirements only. That's it. Let's see the answer. SQC one requires firm to obtain information considered necessary in the circumstances before accepting a new engagement with a new client, or when deciding whether to continue an existing engagement, and when considering the acceptance of a new engagement with existing client. Information such as the following will assist the engagement partner in determining whether the conclusion reached. Regarding the acceptance and confidence of the client relationship and audit engagement are appropriate. Number one, integrity of principal owner, key management, and those charged with governance of the entity. Whether engagement team is competent to perform the audit engagement and their necessary capabilities. 
whether the firm and the engagement team can comply with the requirement or ethical requirements, significant matters that have arisen during the current or previous audit engagement and their implications for continuing the relationship. These are the four things that examples of the four things that would help the engagement partner. Correct, correct, Charu, very good. Correct, Pooja. Correct, Mancha, good. So, yes, this is the information that the engagement partner can have and can decide whether to accept or uh, whether to continue uh, the engagement or not. Clear? Any doubt? Any doubt, guys? No? Okay. Now, <clears throat> the portion where we ended our first essay, essay 250, that in reporting, we will communicate to those charged with governance. Okay. We ended here essay 250. Now, question comes is how to communicate, what to communicate, and when to communicate. So, for that, we need to understand SA 260. SA 260 talks about communication with those charged with governance. So when I say communication to those charged with governance, that should be as per SA 260 and 265. And that we are seeing now. That how to communicate, when to communicate, what to communicate. Okay. Now, when I say SA 260, as I said, every essay has a scope, every essay has an objective. What is the objective here for the auditor? The objective of the auditor is to communicate clearly with those charged with governance. Okay. Now, what to communicate, that is we need to understand. Second, when to communicate, that is we need to understand. How to communicate, that is also we need to understand. Okay. So first, the objective of the auditor is to communicate to those charged with governance. As per this essay, there is a one checklist, one area that you need to do that you need to communicate with those charged with governance. Now the question comes, what should I communicate? What to communicate? And the answer comes is, you need to communicate the responsibilities of auditor. Responsibilities of the auditor in relation to the financial statement, in relation to the financial statements and 
I need to communicate overall, yeah, overview kind of overview of the planned scope and timing. of the audit okay i need to communicate the responsibility of auditor plus the overview of plan scope and timing of audit now that is i need to communicate now a question will come that we were talking about something communicating non compliance now where is the non compliance over here so there is a third point also I, in that case, we need to provide those target governance with, we need to communicate uh, timely observations. Means we need to communicate observations timely arising from audit. Okay, arising from audit. Now, which observations I'm talking about? Observations which are significant okay, and relevant to their responsibility. to oversee the financial reporting process. Means understand, observe, I need to communicate observation on a timely basis arising from audit. What are the observations? Observation could be non-compliance to laws and regulations. That could be one observation Okay, that I need to communicate. But I need to communicate observation which are significant and relevant to their responsibility. For example, okay, there was a non-compliance with respect to there was a non-compliance with respect to uh, safety requirements. Means uh, in in corporate due to fire safety regulations, each and every okay office has to keep codes for you know exit sign. Now from here you need to exit. From here you need to exit. Okay. Now those exit signs were kind of you know not clear or they were not there. Will I go to those charges governance and say, okay, those charges governance, their exit signs are missing. So I'm reporting to you. Please make sure that there is a there should be exit sign in this particular office. Let's say there are hundreds of offices across the India. In one such office, I identified this issue. Will I go to those start with governance and immediately say, okay, this is the observation you need to look into. Please get it rectified. So that will be a scenario kind of, you know, for example, I'm getting a disturbance uh, or, you know, let's say, for example, on my mobile, I'm not getting network. I'm calling directly the CEO of the company that I'm not getting the network. So that should not be the case. So when we are discussing observation, okay. It should be significant and relevant, both. I'm not talking about signif uh, only significant observation, but that should be relevant to their responsibility. Why? Because there are multiple levels of those target governance. We are using the term those target governance, but that is not only one. Same way we saw the example over here. Now, this is. I can say those charged with governance, but they are only responsible for law and regulation because they have an oversighting responsibility. Same way, I have a merger acquisition committee. So I can, can I count this as a those charged with governance with respect to mergers and acquisition? Now, if there is any issue with tax, will I go to mergers and acquisition committee? I'll say there is an issue in tax. 
Or for example, there is a committee on uh, information technology and data security. Again, this is IT and data security. Will I go and bother them? Okay, there is an issue in the text. So that's why I'm saying that when we are required to report the observation, we need to see whether it is relevant to their responsibility or not. It should be significant plus relevant to their responsibility. While communicating. And place and here. Okay. So, responsibility of the auditor in relation to the financial statement, overview of the plan scope and timing of the audit, and the observations on a timely manner arising from the audit. And which observations, when I say observations, which, signif which are significant. which are significant and relevant to their responsibility to oversee the financial reporting process. Those observations I need to come with. Clear? Yeah. That is the objective of the auditor. Here, yeah. basic objective that we need to achieve. Any doubts till now? Okay. Now, when I say what to communicate, okay, is a one part of this essay. There is another part. When I'm communicating, I am expecting something in return. Okay, when I say what to communicate, I am communicating. I am communicating my requirements also. So for requirement, I am expecting something. Kind of you say you can say the second way, the two way communication. So when I say what to communicate, now this communication should be two way. Now, what is two-way communication? That one side I have an auditor, one side I have those charged with governance. So let's say for example, I provided an information of non-compliance. Okay. Does my role end here that okay? I provided an information with respect to the non-compliance. Now my role is over. Do you think that is a scenario that my role will get over once I provide the information to the non compliance? You tell me, guys. Do you think uh, my role will be over once I provide the information about non compliance? What do you think? Is this the end of my role? Okay, I provided the information about non compliance. Now done. Over. Finish. I am not required to do anything further. Yes, no, means that is not the end of my responsibility, correct? If this is not the end of my responsibility, then I'm expecting something in return from those charged with governance, a response in return, okay? I'm expecting something in return from them. That is a response. So I made a request I 
I made a request and I'm expecting a response. The way, you know, the web server works, like, you know, uh, server, you write google.com, you make a request to the server that I need this web page, google.com page, and the server comes with your response, okay, this is a page, take it. That is a two-way communication. Same way, auditor will request those charged with governance, and those charged with governance will respond, will provide a response to the auditor. Auditor will process that response, and again will make a request. That's the two-way communication I'm talking about. And that's the two-way communication has to be there. And that, that's the one of the objective of the auditor that when we are talking about communicating, it should be two-way communication. So all communications should be two-way. Now, when I say two-way communication, I need to expect something in return. What ex uh, What is the thing I'm expecting in response? Okay. What is that thing that I'm expecting back in response for two-way? So when I say two-way, what I'm expecting is that I need to obtain or auditor basically. When I say I, it's an auditor. Auditor needs to obtain relevant information okay relevant information related to audit simple so i will promote two way communication instead of i, I Instead of writing all communications, communication should be two-way communication. So I need to promote, kind of. Communication should be two-way communications, or I need to promote effective two-way communication between the auditor and those charged with governance. And the auditor needs to obtain relevant information related to audit in, in that two-way communication. Okay. Now, when I say about this communication, those start with governance. Okay. What? I, I told you that you need to communicate with those start with governance. You need to communicate. You need to communicate relevant and significant matter. Now the question comes is, okay, first of all, I need to identify in order to communicate. What I need to do is this. When I say how to communicate, Or kind of how to know, uh, you can say to whom I need to communicate, basically. To whom I need to communicate. And the answer for this is, you need to communicate to those type of governance. First, for that, you need to identify who is those charged with governance, who are within the uh, entity appropriate person uh, to whom I can call those charged with governance. I cannot write a letter, okay, to those charged with governance and I will send it to company. Now, company will look uh, themselves, okay, who are those charged with governance. I need to identify specific person, appropriate person within the governance structure. So, let's say, for example, This particular example. Now these are the people. Okay, over here. I can say those start with governance. I have to identify these appropriate people within the organization. Or let's say for example, audit committee. This is the audit committee. Full details of audit committee. I can call those chat with governance. 
I have now identified the individual person who are those charged with governance. Now I can contact with them. I need to contact with them. Let's say, for example, he is a chairman. Then I will contact. Uh, I will, you know, write a letter to this uh, chairman of audit committee. So I need to identify who is those charged with governance. I cannot just write, you know, on my letter, okay, those charged with governance or in my email. There is no specific email ID in the company with those charged with governance at their xyz dot com. No, you don't get these kind of email IDs. So in that case, what I need to do is to whom I need to communicate for that. Answer is yes, those are the government, but I need to identify. Appropriate person. Within the entity's governance structure. Okay, with whom to communicate? Now, once I do, I may communicate with a subgroup also. Okay, in that case, once I perform, in that case, auditor can. can communicate to subgroup also. Now, for example, there are five those charged with governance people, like there are five uh, members in the audit committee. Now, I have uh, identified kind of a fraud where one of the person is involved. I can communicate to the rest of the four. Or subgroup means when I talk back here, I have an audit committee. But there are small, small, different, different committees, IT committee, merger acquisition committee, or, uh, you know, uh, laws and regulation committee. So instead of going to the audit committee, I may also report to the subgroup, like legal and regulatory and tax committee. Might be having same members, might be having different members, but I can, you know, communicate to a subgroup also here. Now, whatever examples I have given, okay, whatever examples I have given, I have given a big company. What if it was a small company, OPC, whom you will contact? In case of OPC, what you will do? In case of OPC, what you will do? From where you will bring those charges, governments, audit committee, or these kind of committees? Come on, guys. We understood what to communicate is these things, but to whom communicate? We understood these uh, these people. But what about in OPC? Whom to communicate? One person company. From where in, in a one person company, from where you will bring those charge with governance? In a partnership, from where you will bring those charge with governance? If you are doing a strict, if you are doing audit, okay, if you are doing audit of a sole proprietor, partnership firm, one person company, private limited or small company where there is no separate those charge with governance, what do you will do? You will say that, okay, I will not follow. Uh, SA 260 because there is no those charge with governance. Someone has written the answer that okay, I will not follow SA 260 because that is not applicable. So, in that case, if 
when your manager when your management and those are the governance is same okay when your management and those are the governance is same in that case for example a small business with business with a single owner okay the matters that are required to be communicated to those that with governance will be communicated to management but not to us for example i'll tell you as of now understand in small companies in small companies if management is equal to those charged with governance then communication to management is equal to communication to those charged with governance that is a thing in small company simple having said that having said that i need to understand few things for example let's say there is a non compliance which has been already reported to management now this is an example for opc or small company okay now that there is a non compliance which has been already reported to management will you report that matter again to management in capacity of those charged with governance understand the thing i am saying i have already reported the matter to the management once but now to satisfy the requirement of sa 260 will you again report this matter to those charged with governance what do you say will you still report the matter or not come on guys will you still report matter to those charged with governance or will you not or will you say that okay it is reported then done matter over what you will do no no need to report again good bachcha good shravanan charu actually it is not required to be reported again okay so when you have already reported the matter to those to the management no need to report again so the answer to this will be no no need to report again because you have already reported the matter okay no there is no point in communicating again but having said that you should be satisfied that you know you have communicated matter to the all the responsible person so let's say for example there is a small company there are two directors now when you communicated the matter at the time of management you communicated to only one director but when you are communicating in the capacity for if you when you want to communicate to those charged with governance 
or the people who are responsible for that. Then at that time, you need to make sure that, okay, both of the directors are aware of the matter. So all the responsible person should be aware about the matter, whether be the management or be the those that is government. Okay. If that is the scenario, if you can that if you ensure that is uh, that particular thing, then it is fine. Clear? Yeah. Now, with, now we need to understand. I was talking about observations, overview, uh, responsibility. What to communicate? Okay. Res we need to communicate responsibility. We need to communicate overview of plan scope, and we need to communicate observations. So these three areas I was talking about to communicate observations. Overview and responsibilities. So now it's time to understand in detail what are these things. So let us first take the responsibility. When I talk about responsibility, what I meant by responsibilities. Which responsibilities? To communicate. So when I say responsibilities, I meant that the auditor's responsibility to form an opinion. Okay, I need. I meant that I need to communicate that the auditor is responsible to form and express. An opinion on the financial statement that have been prepared by management. Okay. By, prepared by management and those charged with governance. So whatever financial statement you guys have prepared, I will express an opinion whether they are giving true and fair and whether they are compliance with the applicable financial reporting framework or not. Then the second is that the audit does not release management. The audit of financial statement does not release the management or those charged with governance from their responsibility. Okay means uh, that they should not understand, they should not, you know, think of that, okay, uh, if I am doing the audit, auditor is doing the audit, means they are filled. They are not required to look into the things anymore. No. Still, they are responsible. And the same is, you know, uh, again and again circulated, again and again communicated through various forms, director responsibility statement, annual report, director's report, and all that stuff. These are the responsibility I need to uh, talk about. Okay. Then, which significant findings I need to communicate? So, this was responsibility. Now comes to which significant findings. Findings or observations. So, which are the significant findings and observations that I need to communicate? 
so i said okay the observation should be significant and relevant now what is the significant observation which are the significant observations that i need to communicate that i, I need to understand okay so significant observations means in auditor's view okay in auditor's view if there is you know uh, observation related to significant qualitative aspects of the entity accounting practice including accounting policies accounting estimate financial statement disclosure okay in that case those views are required to be uh, uh, communicated so i write it kind of you know auditors views on significant quality qualitative expects okay of entity of entities accounting policies accounting estimates then uh, financial statement disclosures okay now these are the things that are required to be uh, provided to the those charges governments okay then second is significant difficulties encountered during the audit for example you are not getting the data there is a limitation on the scope you know management is behaving rudely sometimes something you know that is significant difficulties have arise or you know you are encountering at the time of audit okay significant matters that are already been discussed or communicated to management so matters that are already being discussed or communicated to management means we are discussing something with the management it's significant so now we also want to communicate to those charges governments written representations requested uh written representation request or requirement okay so if i need any written representation then i need to communicate to the those charges the government please provide me that written representation circumstances that affect the form and content of audit report so circumstances that affect the form and content of audit report now when i say uh, form and content of audit report what will affect the form and content of audit report kind of a qualification kind of other information eom paragraph om paragraph something which is you know i am bringing additional to a normal audit report if anything is affecting my form and content of the audit report that i need to specify for example i'll give you an example here modification eom om para going concern para
other item other information other information para so these will we will be learn and we will learn at the time of reporting but remember as of now if there is any significant change or if there is any circumstances which is changing any of the part from the being a standard part then in that case i need to communicate the same to the those charged with governance and last is any other significant matter arising from audit or during audit okay which an auditor's judgment is relevant is relevant to dosha with governance okay so these are the things i need to report now there is an exception here exception is i will not report significant matters that are already being discussed or communicated to door to management uh, uh the matters where those charged with governance are involved for example if there is a fraud case going on fraud issue going on and those charged with governance is part of that fraud i will not discuss that matter with those charged with governance although being already discussed with the management okay so where if the matter is you know uh, involving those charged with governance i will not discuss with them okay so these are the responsibilities significant findings and observation to be communicated there is one more need thing i need to communicate with respect to responsibility only that i purposefully not mentioned here that is independence requirement okay independence requirement that we need to communicate to the to start with governance why i did not mention here with respect to responsibility is that that is something we already comply with when we are looking at the you know sa 200 uh, sa 200 200 220 sqc 1 we are already you know ensuring that we are complied with the independent requirement so it's not a responsibility kind of it's just a communication kind of so remember here i said uh, overview of the plan scope and timing of the audit so plan scope timing of the audit somewhere includes you know independence also that my plan scope includes these these people in my team and these people in my team are also independent so this is something you know coming from the scope of the audit timing of the audit or resources that are appointing on the audit additional kind of independence requirement to communicate so when i have to communicate independence requirement i need to provide a statement i need to give a statement okay that engagement teams and others in the firm as appropriate have complied with the relevant ethical and independence requirement so a statement that engagement team and others in firm i'm talking about the whole firm okay both 
have complied with ethical and independence requirement so there are things that are required to be reported uh, in that statement like you know all relationships between the firm network firm and the entity okay if there is any you know the other service being provided okay or any uh, issue or thread that is coming over to uh, independence the total fees that is being charged for the audit and non audit service okay the fees allocated to the category that are you know uh, kind of you know pro for other services that is being provided to the statutory auditor so all these things are there in that state plus related safeguards to eliminate the threats if, a, if any threat has been identified that is also then uh, included that in that statement okay now When I say there is uh, that is, I need to communicate to whom I we understand what to communicate, which uh, significant observations we understood, how to communicate. That's the question now we need to understand. How to communicate? We need to communicate in writing. to those charged with governance okay uh, regarding significant audit findings and everything and oral communication is not adequate oral communication is not adequate okay so i need to communicate in writing and oral communication is not adequate and everything has to be documented documentation is necessary so when i say how to communicate communicate in writing and communications are required to be documented okay appropriately so retain a copy of communication plus retain a copy of communication clear any doubt guys any doubt so if you want to understand the standard just you know focus on the questions like what is the objective how to achieve the objective uh who are the concerned person in the objective so here if we have to communicate then what to communicate to whom i need to communicate okay which responsibilities which significant findings or observations okay what an independence requirement which independence requirement and then how to communicate if you understood that that is the whole standard that's it any doubt with respect to this any doubt any doubt guys okay if no further doubts so uh, if no doubts then i propose to close the session here in the next session we will continue the chapter there is one more chapter that i want to cover to 65 which is on the line of communication plus we will see a lot of questions okay so i see you in the next lecture guys please be prepared and come with your queries okay thank you guys thank you for participating in today's session thank you yes thank you sir